Welcome everyone for this new edition of our holographic podcast or Holochat. And today I have with me Alex Goldberg. Alex, thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to holographically uh, be in your living room or wherever you uh, are watching, end user. <laughs> so tell me, who's Alex Goldberg? Who am I? Okay. Um, I uh, am a spatial computing enthusiast, I suppose, first and foremost. I've been passionate about uh, building spatial computing solutions. Uh, sometimes we call that XR, which is a combination of uh, augmented and virtual reality. Um, it's a uh, emerging technology. We're at a great point in time now where there's a number of services that let you execute uh, these kinds of respective experiences. Ba but back in the day when I first started, it was a uh, patchwork of different things that you sort of had to um, piecemeal together to uh, create whatever you were trying to do. And we're at an amazing point right now where I've been, uh, things I've been fantasizing about my entire life are finally starting to come online, like solutions that uh, Fernando's company, IXA, has. Thank you. Throughout my entire life, I've been very into technology. Uh, I was very into video games as a kid. I was uh, also a skateboarder. Uh, you know, being, a, being very into skateboarding, it's something you do on your own and you create and invent tricks uh, predicated on the environment that you're in. And I think Spatial Computing Solutions uh, has uh, a lot in common with that where um, there's a lot of different ways to uh, come up with end solutions uh, using different kinds of technologies. Um, so I sort of take that uh, a similar approach that I just tried to describe. Uh, I found out about IEXA through uh, a presentation at NASA called XR Tim uh, through my work at Blue Origin. Uh, I was able to partake in that event and I saw how um, Fernando's technology was used to do a holographic uh, session between Earth and ISS that my friend uh, Dr. Joseph Schmidt conducted with an astronaut, Mark Pathy, who's part of the uh, Axum AX-1 mission. And I was so blown away that with the limited five megabytes of bandwidth that uh, NASA granted them to do that communication, they were able to transmit a hologram to ISS that's an object that's 250 miles in space, traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, and Joseph uh, put me in touch with Fernando, and um, we found out a couple times. Uh, he took me out for beers in Houston when I was on site at JSC last year. We went to an old school roadhouse. That was a, yeah. that was a good time. Um, so yeah, a little bit about what I do at Blue. I, uh, in Seattle, I lead AR for M. That's what we call augmented reality for manufacturing. And um, I also lead another initiative called Reality Capture. Uh, I get to uh, work on technologies that I'm incredibly passionate about, but use that for getting mankind off world. Uh, so I feel very fortunate to be able to do that. I wish I could talk more about the work that I do at Blue but I'm very limited on what I can uh, communicate. And this interview is just a personal interview with me. It's uh, not an official blue um, interview. I should disclaim that. <clears throat> Alex, uh, I don't know if you're aware about this technology as is one of the first holographic interviews. People may be watching this in 20, 30 years from now. What would be your message for people watching this in the future? <clears throat> But I just say hello, uh, people of the future. I hope that you're uh, still here. I hope you receive this message. I have high hopes. Actually, I'm very optimistic and excited for um, our collective future. Um, you know, for these kinds of questions, what comes to my mind is um, really what we were thinking that this technology would be used for in the future and I can't help but think about like back in the 90s uh, what they thought the internet would be for and they had uh, internet radio which was in its infancy having an audio real-time audio playing 
uh, and video was very early at, a, at an incredibly poor frame rate. This is, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, back in the mid to late 90s. Um, and it's interesting to hear uh, their views on the internet. They had high hopes of it being like this uh, town square where, where we could all kind of get together and uh, there was very uh, primitive uh, 2D uh, portals where you could uh, buy books like Amazon. So it's interesting to hear uh, from people their views on the internet and then that's really what I think of when uh, I tried to answer your question. You know, Fernando, thanks for asking me about um, what the future will think. I'm, first of all, I hope that uh, you guys see this and you live in an amazing future that I'm excited for myself and I'm optimistic that we will get there. Uh, you know, when being asked this question, I can't help but think about um, the 90s and the birth of the internet and what people thought that the internet would be uh, used for and now it being uh, almost 2025. Uh, we saw how things turned out, but the original, some of the original ideas, you know, for retail, uh, streaming video, uh, gosh, I didn't think that that would take off the way that it sure has. But um, so I think it'd be interesting to answer this question regarding um, the stuff that I'm most excited about now. So you guys could look back and see what somebody was thinking. Um, I think that uh, holographic communication uh, could be a very powerful means to bring us together and uh, for us to uh, collaborate more effectively. For instance, uh, an, an AR hologram could be inserted into an immersive virtual reality experience that the 3D render that is captured could be translated and then imported into that, uh, as well as the other way around. Somebody's avatar could be holographically brought into my augmented reality. So I love the interplay between that and the way that this kind of a capture, there could be lots of different endpoints and those sorts of overlaps really excite me a lot. Um, I'm very interested in uh, solving uh, complex uh, and using this technology for instructions, uh, a way to c communicate complex procedures more effectively, uh, both uh, like uh, in the enterprise for instructions on for frontline manufacturing environments on how to assemble very complex things and uh, have subject matter experts that are off-site uh, holographically remote in and use this technology to be a force multiplier for those kinds of solutions. We can really scale uh, having that kind of uh, subject matter expert be sent out to they could be located in a central location, but they could support teams uh, globally. Uh, also, the capability for um, companies uh, to, with consumer products, communicate uh, to their end users uh, how to fix things. Uh, we're starting to see uh, right to repair laws change and people could, in theory, uh, have their own at-home printers to print parts and then uh, we could use simple tools and then have uh, complex instructions for each step. You could have an assistant helping you uh, turn wrenches for each of the procedures, uh, things where you typically had to bring it in and drop it off with a quote-unquote expert. You could now become that expert with very intuitive, well-designed uh, holographic instructions. Uh, that personally probably excites me most. I think also solutions like learning uh, languages. You could immerse yourself in that foreign culture. You could be uh, walking down that a street. Uh, uh, you could simulate that type of an immersion. And also having the hologram of a uh, full human body and um, having conversations with those people in that kind of a holographic environment, I think uh, for some of the things that transcend cultural barriers where Duolingo and other popular applications now, um, which are effective, they could really uh, take it to the next level with having 3D immersive holograms, uh, as well as uh, dating apps. You could see your perspective uh, the person that you're interested in meeting, first see, see them in a 
3D holographic rendering. And then instead of texting uh, and just communicating in a 2D uh, text-based uh, way, you, you could jump uh, to meeting them first holographically and that could also be really interesting. <laughs> so uh, things like this, um, those are some of the solutions that come to my mind uh, when thinking about how you guys in the future might be using this technology. That's amazing. in the future and I can't help but think about like back in the 90s uh, what they thought the internet would be for and they had uh, internet radio which was in its infancy having an audio real-time audio plane uh, and video was very early at, a, at an incredibly poor frame rate this is you know in my late teens early 20s back in the mid to late 90s um, and it's interesting to hear uh, their views on the internet. They had high hopes of it being like this uh, town square where, where we could all kind of get together. And uh, there was very uh, primitive uh, 2D uh, portals where you could uh, buy books like Amazon. So it's interesting to hear uh, from people their views.